The Hyperkin Xenon is a phenomenal controller that I highly recommend. I wish I could say the same about this. Greetings, Combat Heads. This is Number Caleb, back with another controller review. Wasn't been doing that one too soon, but I figured, you know, after spending a little more time with this, I decided to review the Hyperkin Duke. For those who don't know, this is basically Hyperkin's remake of the original Duke controller, the original Xbox. Yes, it, the original Duke controller came out way back in 2001 when the Xbox was first released. It wasn't available in the Asian markets, and, uh, after a year, it was quickly replaced by the familiar S controller that we're all familiar with, and it's actually being remade as the Duchess by Hyperkin. There's no release date yet, and I'm looking forward to getting one of those, because I also have more fond memories of that controller, having never used this one. And, well, let's just say there's a reason Microsoft went from this design to the controller S. And yeah, while there are some things I like about it, it's kind of a hard control for me to recommend, and we'll get to that. So let's get to the feel of the controller, and I can tell you right now, this is not a very comfortable controller for a long run. For instance, you can see, obviously it's a big controller. It's huge, it's like twice the size of a DualShock 4. And it's as heavy as an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. Fun fact, watch Gamer Heaven's video if you need proof of that. But look how thick these controller wings are and you know compare it to an Xbox controller you get nowadays it's significantly bigger now, I don't have an original Xbox controller S with me to do a proper comparison but again this is probably one of the reasons they switched from the Duke controller to the controller S for the original Xbox now at first when I held it it did feel a little comfortable because, you know, it's pretty rounded. It fits pretty nice in my hands, but given how much uh, surface area my hands is holding this, it puts quite a bit of strain in my palms and especially around the back of my hands here. So I, I can't really use this controller for longer than 30 minutes or an hour because after a while, it's just not very comfortable. Which, uh, if it had some, like, maybe it had rubberized grips here, that'd be nice, but, uh, they wanted to stay true to the original design, and, you know, they definitely pulled that off, so give credit where credit's due. And, uh, as far as reaching the buttons and stuff go, you can reach the thumbstick pretty well, the D-pad, which I'll get into in a minute. They can reach that pretty well, the, reaching the, uh, well, get to those in a minute. The face buttons, they're pretty good, but you notice how small they are? And, you know, with the design, redesigned controller S, the controllers were, the, the buttons were a little better designed, they were a little bigger, and they were a little better spaced apart, so you can, you know, press them separately a little easier. Here, I can press all four of these buttons with my thumb, and I, and I have fairly big hands, but even after a long time, this is not very comfortable when I hold it. And we got the, uh, black and white buttons, which, and it was played with Xbox, I remember those. And the triggers, they're pretty easy to reach because they're pretty low compared to everything else. And the bumpers, yeah, we're going to get to those in a minute. But yeah, you can press them, but holding it like this, it's not very comfortable. It puts a little strain on my index fingers. So, yeah. Feel-wise, it does not feel good for me. And again, I have fairly big hands. I'm used to like the feel, call me jaded. I'm just used to the feel of the 360 controller and especially the newer Xbox controllers. And even the controller S for the original Xbox, but holding the Duke controller, yeah, there's a reason they got redesigned pretty quickly. Okay. And reaching the face buttons, yeah, you can, yeah, it's nice with it there. So uh, I'm glad they redesigned it. So it's in a better place though. Granted, I wasn't too big of a, a fan of the uh, S controllers button uh, button placements because 
They were over here, like uh, near the D-pad on the left. Instead of being in the middle, which we're traditionally used to, they fixed that with the 360 controller, though. Reach down here, it's pretty okay. And of course, they added the share button, because this is made to be played with uh, the modern Xbox consoles, as well as the PC. But yeah. Now, features go... As far as features go, it's... Just like the Xenon, it's pretty limited, though it does have a few tricks up its sleeve, which we'll get into. Now, again, being a wire controller, it has to be wired. You have to plug it into the Xbox or the PC in order to use it. But, uh, you'll notice this huge, <laughs> as I hit my tripod, this huge green chunk here. Well, this covers up where the original's X, uh, memory card slot supposed to be this. The days of memory cards especially putting them in the controller itself. <laughs> the Dreamcast is only a console, I know that does that. Yeah, as far as features go, it's pretty limited. It does have a one big, one big, mainly cosmetic feature. But you'll notice, I'm, I mentioned that this is meant for Xbox, uh, the newer Xbox consoles. Probably where's the home button? Well, we have been going like this whole time. This big thing here. This is the home button. Not only that, it's a screen. And what does it do? Well, I have the cable here, which, um, yeah, you know, normally don't discuss cables, because they're usually not worth mentioning. This cable here, it's a bit different. Instead of being clothed, it's like, uh, instead of like braided cables, it's like this sort of, not cloth material, but something similar. And it seems to just cover the wire itself instead of being you know, traditional braided cables. And only six feet. So for a controller that's meant to be used on the consoles, that's a pretty short cable. Even the Xenon came with a 10-foot cable. Granted, that came out uh, after this one. So I guess Hyper can learn that lesson. But uh, yeah. As I plug in the uh, controller, you get... Startup graphic, the original Xbox boot sequence, and a little uh, graphic showing the 20th anniversary. Because this is a 20th anniversary controller. This controller's been out for a while, so like around 2021, celebrate the 20th anniversary. They released this version, which I got. And yeah, this big screen is the home button. You press it, and you have the home button. But every time you press it, it replays the uh, startup sequence. No sound, of course. It's just a display. And uh, that's pretty much the big feature of this controller. Other than that, there's not much else going on with it. Again, it's nice to include bumpers, but uh, we're going to get to that later again. But uh, I do like how the, the D-pad little green. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a fan of the design of this. Granted, it feels, you know, it does function properly. You know, the register is the direction is pretty good, but just the appearance of it just doesn't sit well. Granted, this was what the original looked like. Granted, it was black, not green, but I don't know, I'm I'm just glad they redesigned it in the controller S. But honestly, I still prefer this D-pad over the original 360 D-pad. <laughs> But, uh, now, ease of use, it's a wire controller, just plug it in and you're good to go. But keep in mind, if you want this screen to work properly, you can't plug it into a wall outlet or a charger or anything. You have to plug it into an Xbox console or your PC, otherwise this thing will just blank. So you can't really use it as a display piece, though. <laughs> this might as well be a display piece, so given that not a very comfortable controller to hold in the long term. Which, uh, I guess we'll quickly segue into the cons, because, yeah, there's quite a few of it on here that make it a hard recommend for me. But, again, I have fairly big hands, but this is not a comfortable controller to hold in the long term. Like, after, like, 30 minutes, I start to feel a little strain in my palms, especially on the back. And it does not feel comfortable with this, 
this is why they redesigned it. This was not a very comfortable control in the long run. No. Back in the day, it might be okay, but this is 2024. We're used to like uh, rubberized grips and like smaller control wings that are more ergonomic in the hands. This, you know, stayed true to the original design. You know, it works to a fault. And you know, if you're playing playing Call of Duty or Apex Legends with this, good luck because uh, it's not a very comfortable controller. Plus the uh, buttons are so close together. I feel it's easy to press the wrong button, like especially with big thumbs like me, like I press A, but I actually press X as well. Or I'm probably sure why, but I have to press all four buttons at once. Yeah, not too big on that. And another big flaw, the shoulder buttons. I don't even know why they bothered, honestly. They should have just kept the black and white buttons, just use those. Granted, the uh, shoulder buttons do mimic the black and white buttons, which behaves as a shoulder button, so have one or the other. You know, if you're staying true to the original design, just stick with these. Don't even put shoulder buttons, because you gotta remember, the original Xbox controllers didn't even have shoulder buttons, just triggers. And the black and white buttons were turned to the secondary buttons. Meant to mi sort of mimic shoulder buttons, even though they don't mimic them in form, they mimic them in function, in a way. But yeah, these shoulder buttons huge design flaw. As I mean, again, I have fairly big hands, but trying to reach these, especially when you hold it like this, it does not feel good. Like you can hit it like in the, the base of the tip of your fingers here, but it does not feel comfortable at all. Now, granted, if you put your middle fingers on the uh, triggers, and your index fingers are here, it feels a little better, but that's usually not how I hold my controllers. I keep my index fingers on my uh, triggers. Then I move into the bumpers if I need to, but doing it like this, it's quite a bit more travel and just it just not just not gonna feel good in the long run. It does it just does not. <sighs> Trying to talk and think at the same time. Not one of my strong suits. But yeah, trying to reach the triggers, the bumpers in this, not a very comfortable feeling. And yeah, I haven't even gotten to this. When this controller first came out, it was pretty pricey. It, it, the MSRP was $90 when it came out. Granted, it's a little cheaper in price now. When I got this, it was like $65. So, definitely more reasonable price point for this, but $90 for this? Like, are you crazy? Now, granted, the uh, Cortana edition, which has like a uh, translucent purple shell, uh, pretty Cortana on the side, as well as a different uh, startup graphic here celebrating Halo's 20th anniversary at the time. You know, that real to you for $90 still. So, maybe for collector, go for that one. But yeah, this is a, even at $65, it's fairly pricey for what you're getting. Like, it doesn't offer any additional features. Now, the Xenon controller is a bit more of a justifiable purchase. It's only $50. Yeah, it doesn't have any additional features like back paddles or, you know, Bluetooth connection or anything like that. But it's pretty reasonable. Here, you're pretty much paying for the novelty with the larger controller and this little screen displaying the startup graphic. That's pretty much what you're paying for. $90 is a pretty tough pill to swallow. $65, much more reasonable in my opinion, but still pretty overpriced for what you're getting. Like, it doesn't offer any special features other than the screen here. Again, no back buttons, no, no like trigger stops, or at the very least, a more reasonable shoulder button placement. Like, if they were, like, up here, they'd be a little easier to press for me. Granted, you have to press them in a weird way, but it's much more comfortable, it would be much more comfortable than this. But yeah. $65, you get a pretty oversized controller. With a nice little screen here. That's pretty much it. So yeah, the Hyperkin Duke controller. Now, pros co. You know, it stays true to the original design. And the home screen is a nice little touch. But uh sadly this is the pros end for me. As far as cons go, very uncomfortable, especially in the long term. 
play. Button placement, not a huge fan of. The, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention the control sticks. Pretty inaccurate, 60% error rate, the gamepad tester. So yeah, not a big selling point for these. Shoulder button placement is terrible. And the big thing, it's an expensive controller for what you're getting. It doesn't offer anything special other than the screen. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, in the end, do I recommend the Hyperkin Duke controller? Sadly, I'm going to say no. Now, I would recommend this for collectors. Actually, there are only like two people that I would recommend the controller for. Collectors and hardcore Xbox fanboys that uh, we like to collect nice bits of uh, Xbox nostalgia. But uh, for everyone else, I say stick to the Hyperkin Xenon controller. Or at the very least, if you must have an OG Xbox controller make, wait for the Duchess controller. There's still no release date on it, but I'd much rather wait for the Duchess controller. You know, it's a much more comfortable controller all around. At least the controller S was. And it's going to have Hall Effect joystick, so it's going to be a major selling point for that controller. As for this controller, yeah, I do plan on keeping it. And that's what this plays. I'll still use it every now and then. But uh, as far as uh, classic Xbox goes, I'm probably going to stick with the Xenon. And you probably should too. Or at the very least, wait for the Duchess. But yeah, the ergonomics, the uh, button placement, and the price make it a hard sell for me. So, unless you're a die-hard Xbox fanatic, I say steer clear of this controller. But anyway, this is Uncle Gaming Caleb signing out. Have a good day. Suck it up, life's tough, we know that Someone's got better stuff and can throw cash Tell them I don't give a fuck, make my own path I don't need no handouts, I'm my own man Gotta get it, I'll get it, get it in fast, yeah Got a girl that she'll get it, get it, she bet, yeah Man, I only get down with the best, uh I'ma leave the complaints with the rest, uh